Welcome to In the Workshop. This is all about a Stuart Sirius steam engine. In the past, Stuart supplied castings for three similar engines. There was a Star, which was the smallest of the three, and the Sun engine, which was the next size up, followed by this one, the Sirius. I bought this Sirius recently for my collection, and looking at this engine, I have a feeling that this was once part of a World War II generating set. It's been repainted over the years, and now it's very dirty, so while I'm talking about this, I'm just going to clean it up. Normally when you see me doing this, I have some cellulose thinners, also known as lacquer thinner, in the plastic tub. But here I'm using a liquid called panel wipe, and this is very similar to the lighter fluid that you used to put in your old lighters. I used to use the old lighter petrol for cleaning my tape heads on my large tape recorders in the studio for many years. Panel wipe is really good for cutting through grease and grime. This engine has a wet sump, the crankcase is full of oil, and before using it you need to lift this up to vent the crankcase. In this clip I'm removing the split pin from the main pin that holds the valve operating mechanism to the valve itself. In order to remove this mechanism from the engine, I have to unscrew the exhaust pipe as you see here. Then I can lift the mechanism clear of the engine to allow me to clean underneath it. And as before, I'm using a toothbrush with the same cleaning liquid, the panel wipe. This part is the piston valve, and I've pulled it out of the valve chest so you can get a good look at it. I'm now putting it back in the valve chest so I don't lose it. First impressions on this engine tell me that these parts are very well made and there's not much sign of any wear. This is where you fill the crankcase with oil. When you remove the cap, it has a very convenient dipstick built in, so you can see how much oil is in the crankcase. When I got this engine, there wasn't much oil in the crankcase, so a couple of hours before I made the video, I filled the crankcase with oil, then I ran the engine for a while using compressed air, and here I'm draining all the oil out of the crankcase to have a look what colour it is, and see how dirty it is and looking at the colour of the oil, it looks fine to me. The inlet manifold to the engine has been modified and some sort of a very small displacement lubricate has been fitted. This is horrible, so I'm removing it. I'm going to temporarily fit this small displacement lubricator because I want to steam the engine. I intend to put this manifold back to standard in a future episode, and that includes removing this drain cock from halfway down it and here's where I will fit a full-size Stuart Models displacement lubricator. As I'm about to run this engine using compressed air, I'm refilling the sump with oil, and I'm checking the level with the dipstick. As the dipstick is attached to the cap, I assume that you screw the cap all the way in, but maybe you don't, maybe you just sit it on the top. The main thing is, there's sufficient oil in the crankcase for me to run the engine. And while I remember, I'm filling the displacement lubricator. This will not work with compressed air, but when I steam the engine, it will be already full of oil and ready to go. This is not my general lubrication mixture, this is neat steam oil. I've connected the compressed air supply, it's time to see if the engine runs. And as you've just seen, this engine runs very well indeed. The design of this steam engine is very different to the ones that I normally work on. This type of engine is single acting and it's designed to run at a very high speed and it's very powerful, although in this clip it's running in slow motion. And now a steam test using my really excellent Castle Steam V6 boiler steaming inside the workshop and it's powered by a small gas burner, definitely not by coal. Usually, for test purposes, I connect the steam engine to the boiler using this silicone rubber tubing. I usually buy this thick-walled silicone rubber tubing via eBay, and as you can see, it just pushes onto the end of the steam fitting, and then a cable tie holds it in place. I also use the same type of tubing for water piping too. There's not much pressure in the boiler yet, but what I thought I would do is open the drain cocks and let some steam through to the engine to warm it up. There's nowhere near enough steam pressure at the moment to run the engine, and with the drain cocks open, you can clearly see here that the first steam that's entering the engine is immediately being condensed to water because the engine's cold, and the excess water is being evacuated by the drain cocks. 
Here's a shot of the pressure gauge, and as you can see from this, there isn't much pressure in the boiler at the moment. But nevertheless, I'll see whether the engine will run on this low pressure. Nothing yet. I'll open the steam valve a bit wider. The engine initially starts because the first steam that it gets is via the superheater. But once the condensate in the cylinder clears, it starts to run quite well. Time to close the drain cocks. And as you see, I'm not using a cloth. I'm using my fingers because it's grim up north and with a very hardy race. Or maybe it's more likely that my fingers have got used to the heat over the years. I do love the valve operating mechanism on these engines. It's really quite mad, but it works. I'm going to stop talking and just let you watch and listen to the engine, but I'm coming back at the end with some important information. But for now, I'll be quiet. At this point of the steam test, I thought I'd better refill the displacement lubricator because it's very small. With the top cap of the lubricator still in place, I opened the steam valve and also opened the drain valve on the lubricator. The water and the remaining oil is blown out of the lubricator. Then I closed the steam valve on the boiler, removed the top cap from the lubricator and refilled it with oil. And after refitting the top cap, it's back to the steam test. I turned off the gas supply to the engine a while back and eventually the engine stopped. With any cast iron steam engine, there's a very important after run procedure that you need to carry out. In this clip, I'm injecting some WD 40 into the inlet manifold, which in turn will find its way through the cylinders when I connect the compressed air supply. It's very important with a cast iron engine that after the run, you remove all traces of water from the cylinder or anywhere else inside the engine. And with this type of engine, having a wet sump, you need to make sure you do not have any water at all in the sump. So to do this, I'm just taking out the plug. And when I remove the plug and hold the engine in the correct position, I don't want to see any water coming out. Because as we all know, oil floats on water, so if there was water in here, you would see it clearly. But the good news is, this engine's in very good order. Water is not getting into the oil, so the pistons aren't blowing. Eagle-eyed, meticulous-type viewers may notice that the crankshaft has been shortened at the right-hand side of the engine, as shown in this clip. You are, of course, correct, and the reason the crankshaft is shorter at the right-hand side is I sawed it off on the bandsaw. And why did I do that? I removed the end of the crankshaft because it was very bent. There's a fix for this, and I may show it in a future episode, but for the moment it's OK. I'm going to make a fitting for the flywheel to allow me to put a pulley on the end or whatever I need to do. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.